Jason here, Blood Church, coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, thumbs up. I'd love to have you join the channel of Bible-believing Christians who believe in our blessed hope, Titus 2.13, and the soon return of Jesus Christ. If the rapture has happened already, then I want you to refer back to the, my homepage, and there's a video about what to do next in the tribulation to be saved when millions of people have disappeared. If it hasn't happened yet, all you have to do is take the free gift of salvation during this church age. What does that mean? 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 in the Bible clearly states that Jesus Christ died with us, the Messiah came down, walked a perfect life, died on a cross, and that's this is key, what he did on that cross, he shed all his blood for you. Uh, he became a appropriation for you, and he cleanses your sins with that blood. But you have to believe with your heart, not just your head, you have to believe with your heart, and confess with your mouth that you're in need of a Savior, and you believe Jesus Christ died on the cross and was buried and rose from the dead three days later like only God can do. And then you'll be saved, all past, present, future sins, all washed away by the blood and what he did on that cross. So we're going to cover Romans 16 today. Um, Paul starts out listing some of the most important Christians in Rome, and then later on he goes into... Um, what he really would like to to accomplish and you know with the people in Rome. So we're gonna I'm just gonna go over this. I'm not gonna read every verse, but we'll start out in verse one. I command unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church which is in Censoria. So Phoebe uh, means servant. The Roman Catholic and the New Bibles uh, they try to twist this and and make it something that it's not. <clears throat> they try to make it a deaconess. Um, but that's not the case. Uh, Phoebe, you know, she could not hold um, that title of deacon because um, for a deacon was to be be the husband of one wife, and she is a, she is a woman. So I don't know why they make that change. So what happens is you see in the beginning here different names mentioned, and we'll just look at we'll just go through a few of these verses. Verse 5, likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved, Apetinus, who is the first fruits of Acadia unto Christ. And so the word house here is interesting. It, it, here it could refer to a building, uh, but it's also possible that, to use that word in terms of household. For the church is said to have ears at Acts 11.22. And so I'm not really sure you know, exactly what that means, but it certainly... You know, an interesting verse. Verse 6, Greet Mary who bestowed much labor upon us. So, there are, what's funny, there are seven Marys in the scriptures. Of course, God loves the you know the number seven. There's the one here. There's Mary Magdalene. And then there's Mary, the mother of James and, and Josie in Matthew 27, 56. There's Mary of Bethany. There's Mary, the wife of Clephesus at John 19, 25. And Mary, the mother of Jesus. And Mary, the mother of John Mark. Some scholars make two of these Marys the same person, making six Marys, but there's seven. God works in seven. He loves seven. So it's a, you know, the number seven. You can see it here. Let's go and read verse seven. Salute Androcius and Juna, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners who are note among the, the apostles who also were in Christ before me. Um, you know, these guys suffered. Uh, these apostles suffered. If you ever studied their life, you, you know that they, they were quite persecuted. And it was quite, quite sad. Uh, fellow prisoner, you can see here in verse 7. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, that's why I pointed this verse out. Um, let's drop down to verse 16. Salute one another with a, with a holy kiss. So this is the idea of the, the holy kiss that the Roman Catholic Church uses is where they get it from. The churches of Christ salute you. And um, so the next part we see Paul uh, giving giving some, some instruction. Now I beseech you, brother, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. So if we have people that on online 
there's many of them that will teach wrong doctrine. They'll say that you have to follow the Jewish law when you when we're in the church age. And they will say that water baptism saves it to work. They will say that you can lose your salvation, which is not true. And we're to mark them and to to point them out when they when they teach doctrine contrary to the gospel. Verse 18, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. You notice a lot of these people that have big, big channels or major churches and metropolitan areas, they they actually often are just a salesman or a spokesperson with a deceitful tongue. And all they want to do is make themselves rich. I think that's what this verse says. Verse 19, for your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on, on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and, and simple concerning evil. You know, simplicity is truth. You know, when, you know things that are simple are usually, are usually the truth. When you complicate things and you try to twist things, well, then evil and wrong come into what should have been Something that's simple, simplistic. You know, one of the things I always ask myself when I when I do something, is it right or not right? Um, is it right or wrong in the sight of God? All these kind of things. Let's go down to verse 20. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. So... You know, that's something that we have to look forward to. The Lord is going to get rid of the evil of this of this world at, and stomp out its army at the Battle of Armageddon in the, at the end of the tribulation. And although a new world order leader out of the UN will rise and make his mark be required, um, God will win at the end and God will win the day. And um, good will will simply de you know defeat evil in the end. Um, and I think that's important. Let's look at verse twenty five here, Romans sixteen. Now to him that is power to establish you according to my gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. And Titus one two through three. Uh, Paul's mystery, you know, we can see that in Ephesians 3, 1 through 8 as well, uh, was preached long before he wrote, even wrote Ephesians, but essentially um, the mystery that Paul preaches, it was agreed on by God and, and, and Jesus, who's one, you know, part of the Trinity before the beginning of time. Verse 26, but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Verse 27, To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. And um, really beautiful set of verses. And, um, and we know that um, good will conquer evil. And we know that Paul did a great service writing this letter to the people of Rome and how he started off, you know, really attacking evil and, and sins and really bringing forth, you know, um, the differences between the law and, and, and Christian salvation and what it meant to be a Christian and the gospel of our faith is important and it rings out true throughout this whole book. It was a pleasure to go through this book. I really enjoyed it. Um, there certainly could be a lot more to go through um, as I look at this, but um, I just wanted to, to cover the basics of Romans. I hope you enjoyed the study. God bless and have a great day.